guys welcome back sorry it's been a little while but I've been busy clearing down the old deck which is a mammoth task and when you're not well physically at the moment it's hard and it's hard when you get old <laughs> but the gardens you know it's in a bit of a state but next year it's going to be awesome I've moved all the insect habitats there ever so slowly literally a foot every half an hour so the bees could find their way back and they've all been moved and you can see some up there in the grass which is good apples are coming on here look um, there's so much rubbish in this ground as you know if you've watched my videos in the past the deck's slowly coming down the idea is to cover the old deck with the new one that way I don't need a skip which is like a dumpster if you're from America don't need to burn any wood or anything it's all gonna rot down underneath the new deck we're going to cover it with a lining once it's all stacked so that no spores and mold from the rotting wood gets up into the new stuff but hopefully it will make it as carbon friendly as possible and this whole section here will be a new wildlife garden next year but while I was doing it well actually I'll get onto that in a minute I just want to show you the eryngiums which I've moved all these plants as well but the eryngiums are doing fantastic this year and you can see there if you want a good all-round plant for pollen and nectar well you could you couldn't go far wrong than getting an eryngium this is a planum variety but I've also got varifolium as well but not only do little solitary bees you can see there there's a uh, Argus brown butterfly on there I think it's an Argus brown it's hard to tell could be a common blue we've got to count the spots and that's an Argus brown I think and there's some I guess that's white towels or could be buff towels there's flies on there there's cabbage whites there's gatekeepers coming on here as well so what a fantastic plant and it's it is doing so well and like I say if you want a plant that's relatively easy to propagate then that's the one I think I would go for. Be careful when it's young and, and kind of sweet for slugs. That's why I grow mine in the water here. Actually, that's run out, but that you can see the water there. It stops them getting across. But once they're established, you don't really need to worry. But we're early on, if the slugs will keep nipping the top off of the plant and it's hard to get that, that central sprouting section, which is where these kind of thistly things come from um, I think it's called sea holly if I'm not mistaken sedum's another good one but that's not quite flowering yet but it's great for August September time sedum so while I was taking the deck down I thought I'd use the wood and you know if you do have any old wood particularly decking which is perfect for it like this section here within an hour and a half I made a hedgehog house and it's not pretty I'll show you it in a second but it's so easy to do I use the nails from this as well and the screws straighten them back out and and um, I made the hedgehog house with it and it literally in an hour and a half I've got a hedgehog habitat I've got a lot of wood here which is you know going underneath the new deck I could make another one but for now I've got one and it's going to a friend of mine I'm going to drop in the top corner uh, the amazing amounts of dragonflies I had the other night when the ants nest here which is uh, kind of up here you can see actually it's down in here there's a couple of black ants nests when the at a certain point in the year all the ants I guess future queens with the wings take off all at once and I had about 50 dragonflies flying around and hopefully they're laying their eggs in the new pond so I would say if you if you want to get a garden that's really good for those dragonflies and they are the ultimate creature to have they like having mystical creatures dragons and you know they look like science fiction don't they dragonflies and they're great for kids and they're beautiful if you can if you can get close to one so if you want to have that in your garden I would say water and, uh, and black ants or any ants really but black ants seem to do well here would be is a great way to start don't get rid of your ants nests because there are other creatures as well that will 
um, benefit from those, not just ground dwelling creatures, but birds as well and swifts and swallows and stuff when, they, when the ants take to the air. So yeah, keep your ants. So let's have a look at this hedgehog habitat. Like I say, hour and a half, it's not pretty, but you'll be able to see what you can knock up in that time. So there it is, nothing special. Just a load of old decking. Some of it's on its way, like rotting, but it's not bad. So it, I've put a couple of bits underneath to keep it off the ground. I'm going to put a, uh, a section here, which I haven't made yet, so that it's down to the ground. Um, but yeah, five or six inch square opening. Fill it with leaves. You can cover it with um, um, you know, a plastic bit at the top to keep the water out, which is probably what I'll advise my friends to do. And I've just got a lid here, which is which fits nicely in there and then leave some gaps all around you can't have too many gaps because it keeps the habitat from we imagine hedgehogs in there breathing for six months there's so much condensation and they're not very clean hedgehogs to be fair to them so you need as many gaps you can there's one down the back and there's one on each end just to keep it nice and fresh in there as fresh as you can it just sits in there nicely and there you have it, an hour and a half to make that. Like I say, not pretty, but very functional. So you've got decking. Even if you buy some on eBay, you could make one of those. So thanks for watching, real quick video. They'll get a point this year where um, I, you know, ultimately stop making videos um, until next year because things quieten down in the garden. And if you're making wildlife videos and there's no wildlife around, it's not a lot to talk about, but it's very seasonal, but um, don't give up. We'll be back next year. And I'll have some news for you next year. Big news, hopefully, the, towards the end of next year about another wildlife garden project that's gonna be imminent. But uh, for now, thanks for watching. I've probably got a few more videos this year and then it'll, uh, be, the garden will be closed down for the winter. But appreciate all your support. Like and subscribe and share and try and get my subscribers up to a thousand i think i'm on 900 nearly so yeah when we hit that thousand then we can start working on the four thousand hours in the last month i think i'm on three and a half thousand so you know generally it's not too bad you know we're getting there and once it all happens we can we we can re-monetize this channel and start saving rainforest again sorry about the strange edit there somebody facetimed me as i was uh, finishing off but yeah it's all good we're gonna get there and then hopefully you can save a few acres a year. And uh, you guys are awesome. I mean, it, I'm not into social media. I don't know if you've noticed that. I, you know, I, I, I do it kind of begrudgingly because I don't want to get into that. I like being outside in the garden, but social media definitely has its place. And, you know, all the people that watch this, you know, they're, they're patient people. They don't want videos every day. They're interested in wildlife and their own gardens. And even if you haven't got a wildlife, you know, start. You can have all the things that I've got here within a couple of years. A garden can quickly get established. And when you do, you'll be benefiting wildlife and the wider world, climate change and stuff, in ways you never thought you would. Because when you plant a seed in your head, uh, if you pardon the pun, and become wildlife friendly it opens avenues into loads of other things as well I mean I would never have thought I would have been vegan uh, you know I've been a vegetarian for 35 years but veganism just sounded too hard to me but it's literally the best move I've ever made and if you want to do something that benefits the environment and even you know nature and natural habitats then go vegan because you'll, you'll instantly save two hectares of land, which is what the average meat eater takes to grow the, the, the soya and the crop to feed the cows and the pigs and what have you, so that they can grow and eventually be culled. It's not just like, oh, there's a cow. It takes years to get a cow to that size. And uh, you know, if you, if you stop eating meat, that is the best thing you can do for nature and the world, you know, in the larger world as well. So anyway, I won't go on about that. It's kind of, kind of a private thing, but for me, it's the best decision I ever made. The only regret is I didn't do it sooner. But thanks for watching again, and we'll speak soon. Cheers. Wishing.